Watch the Oracles of God television to get the eternal gospel of Jesus Christ right out of Africa. So this morning I want us to share on the secrets of why some people are able to smile in the midst of fire. Why some people can keep saying it is well. When it doesn't look like it is well, it doesn't feel like it is well, and ultimately it is always well. Why are some people able to do that? And some others not able. Because this is the technology of heaven. The ability to call things which are not as though they are. Now we want to let out some secrets this morning. These are the foundational secrets that make some successful in their relationship with God. And this is the reason why some find it difficult and they struggle. Amen. I want us to look to this morning... To see why some come to church but don't get to the kingdom. Why some come to church but they don't get to the kingdom. And I'm going to take my text, take off from Psalm 19 from verse 10. This was one of the lowest moments in the life of Jesus Christ. And what I'm about to read to you was a prophecy that had captured it outside time and brought it into scriptures a few thousand years before the event. And you see, whatever will lift Jesus Christ out of his lowest and put him in the place of victory is a spiritual secret that every believer needs. This was a prophecy that was plucked out of the realm of the spirit because before God, time is not sequenced like it is for us. In the flesh, you have the past, the present, then the future. But with God, the sequence doesn't run like that. That's why God is able to sometimes bring the future in a vision and show it to you in the presence. Praise the Lord. Amen. He says, for you will not leave my soul in hell. This prophetic utterance came a few thousand years before. You will not leave my soul in hell. Neither will you suffer your Holy One to see corruption. You won't even allow my body to be corrupted in the grave. You will show me the path of life. And here comes the secret. Because in your presence. In your presence, O oh Lord. There's fullness of joy. And at your right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. Now, this usually marks the turning point of many believers when they get their first experience. Beloved, until you begin to go to the spirit. Let me come from the African angle. God is spirit. And when you want to go to the presence of God... You're not going to buy the air ticket and head for the airport. You need to understand the spiritual protocols that get you into the presence of God. And here, the Messiah is breathing the prayer. It's his lowest moment. Sometimes things get tough. Sometimes you don't even feel good. But he said something there. You will never, see, never suffer, you will not permit your Holy One to see corruption. And you will show me the path of life. You will show me how to get out of this situation. You will show me how to triumph. You always show me how to get to the place of light when it seems as if darkness has surrounded me. You will show me how to be lifted when I'm down in the valley dip. You will show me the path of life that will take me to the mountain top. When the bank accounts are reading red... And things look like there's no way you will show me the way out of the red of the account into the place of surplus and abundance. But you see, for you to get that understanding, to get the information, to get the flow, the help, the things of the Spirit that will help you always, you must access His presence. Yes, God is everywhere. But there's something known as the presence of the Lord. And one of the things about the presence of the Lord is that 
There's a fullness of joy. You know, this happened to me many years when I stumbled into this. I began to go to God's presence, and once I would enter His presence, you know that I would even forget the prayers I planned to pray. And it would be only when I'm taking out my steps into the natural, that I say, my God, I went to pray for three days, and I didn't even cover my prayer points. Because there's something about His presence that's intoxicating. Until you have tasted this, church is a game. It's something that's meant for individuals. That's the reason why we gather together. In your presence there's fullness of joy, and then watch this, there is something addictive at his right hand. Nothing more addictive than pleasure. You call your son while he's playing Super Mario and he's in stage 6 or 7. He's about to finish it and you say lunch is ready. He says, mom, I'm coming. Amen. He's playing. 30 minutes later, he hasn't had anything to eat since breakfast. On a good day, he could be clamoring for lunch. But right now, he's engrossed in something that's given him what? Pleasure. You see, people make prayer sound like it's a drudgery. The secret of those who enjoy God the most. Ask Elijah. Ask David. Ask the cloud of witnesses that have always gotten it right. Are those who know the reality of the presence of God. It's more addictive than cocaine. In his presence there is fullness of joy. At his right hand there are pleasures forevermore. The highest high you've ever had. Comes nothing near what you get once you can actually get into the presence of God. A lot of people go to church and stop short of the kingdom. Because the presence of God is not necessary with the church. His presence belongs to him where he belongs. And in a few minutes we'll see what I mean. Now, even when you're in the valley deep and things are looking awry, things are looking bad, looks as if nothing is working your way, once you can get into his presence, you get an assurance. One of the first things is that, do you know something? It always puzzled me. I'm looking at certain problems, people come to talk to me, and then you go before the Lord. What looked like a mountain a few minutes earlier, you're beginning to ask yourself, is this why I came to trouble the Father? This might annoys you. For many years people would come to me and say, Pastor, I, there's something happening. The doctor said I have cancer. Um, my husband just had an accident with the car. And blah, blah, blah. And people would be shocked when I keep asking, is that all? In fact, some would get annoyed. And I say, oh, that's all? Oh, when they said you wanted to see me and that you were looking worried, I thought maybe we had some big problems in hand. Why? Because I've been in the presence of the Lord. You catch me in the presence of the Lord. And you bring to me what looks mighty to you. From your pedestrian view in the terrestrial. But in the presence of the Lord. Excuse me. Big deal. Why? In his presence there is a fullness of joy. At his right hand there is an experience of pleasure. A permanent high. Now, when you are in that valley deep. When things not looking right. I like one thing that the Bible likes to establish for people who like to. Really get to understand what happens when you get to his pleasure. His presence. Now watch this. There are counterfeit pleasures that look like his own. And some of the counterfeit pleasures that look like the pleasures at the right hand of God can be found in church. Those are the most dangerous ones. Counterfeit pleasures that prevent you from the full pleasure of the Most High. There are some pleasures that can come out of good music. That's why sometimes in those days you'd go to those concerts and all of a sudden you're hearing that the drum beats, you know, the drums are rolling, it's announcing, I'm coming out, <laughs> I'm coming. Aha, your heart begins to race, the cloud stands up, it's a standing ovation, I'm coming. Da, 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 come in, da, da, da. My God, you are excited. As a matter of fact, some women 
get so excited. Some young men get so excited, they just do what? They swoon and they slump. It wasn't no service. It wasn't not presence of God. You know what it was? Counterfeit pleasure. So you can come into church too, and hit what they call counterfeit pleasure, without getting to the presence of God. I say this thing so that we can understand. Why? If you stop short of the original pleasure that takes away the aches, that makes the mountain look like a molehill, you'll discover that promotion does not come from church, but from the kingdom of God. And that's why the psalmist will tell you that promotion does not come from the east, or from the west, or from the south, and go silent about the north. And it says, but God is the judge. He puts down one and he sets up another. I always tell people sometimes, even when you study the, just the scriptures alone, you want to understand certain things, if you want to look for the person who was in trouble more, if you were to choose between David and Saul, as far as men are concerned, who was the more jagudaicious person? David. Who was the man after God's heart? David. What was the difference? You'll find out today. Promotion doesn't come from the east or west. It's God who sets one up. It's his pleasure. All things were created for his pleasure. Amen. And that's why you need to find out that every time you say, let us go to church. Let's go to the place of prayer. Let's do this. Let's do that. Let me show you where you are going. Where the presence of God is. Where there is a fullness of joy. And that place where there is pleasures forevermore. Why is there a fullness of joy in that place? Because there is no request that goes unanswered. Once it can get to that place. That's why Satan will do everything to divert you. To keep you from getting to that place. He will use entertainment to lure you. He will try all sorts of stuff. Outside church, in church, in your home. Revelation chapter 4 tell you. Man of God says, and immediately I was in the spirit. Now this place is in the spirit. The location where God dwells, where his manifest presence is, is in the spirit. Some people have been to London, some have been to New York, some have been to Tokyo, Japan, but they've never been into the spirit. But today, that story will change. Praise the Lord. I was in the spirit and behold, a throne was set in heaven. A throne and a one sat on the throne. And he began to describe, he looked like a jasper and a sardine stone. And there was a rainbow round about the throne. Looked like an emerald. Then the next thing. For you to know that this throne is not just some mere throne. There's a massive throne and then there are seats. 24 seats. 24 elders with crowns of gold. Whose crowns are bigger than the crown of the Queen of England. 24 of them. It's a real place. It's a real location. You know, these days of democracy, people feel that prayers hang in the air. No. There is a presence of the king. The one who created the heavens and the earth. The one who was before the before. And the one who will be after the after. Hello? So you see, on that throne, there are 24 elders. What do elders do? They sit in court. Who sits there? The king. Bible says where the word of a king is, there's what? Power. Let me tell you something about Nigerians. Sometimes some people have financial problems and all they want to do is if only I can get past the protocols. If only I can get past the security and I can just get to see M-K-O. Money. Kudi. O. Abiola. Many knew that he was so generous by reputation. That if only they could get to see him, the child's school fees, the house that hadn't been completed, whatever it was, as long as it had to do with money. They'd have that confidence. So they spent all their time trying to make sure that they would get to see MKO of blessed memory. Now, 
The interesting thing is that the best place to be at is the presence of the Almighty. It's available. It's accessible. That's why in the lowest low of Jesus Christ's life, He said, you will not suffer me, you will not leave my soul in hell, you will not suffer me, you won't permit me to see corruption. No, you won't. You will show me the path of life. There must be a solution. And there's one place where the solution must come from. The place of promotion. The place where promotion is prepared. The place that is announcing your promotion today. In the mighty name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Now what's the difference? The people who know how to go to this place always do better than those who don't. Let me warn you about life. I was counseling some man many years ago and he said to me, Pastor, why didn't I know all this? I was in the corporate world. I was so successful, quote. I went for many years. I had no idea about the presence of God. Everything was going fine. And then one day, somebody say one day, Satan pulled the rug from under his feet. All of a sudden, one day, everything came crumbling. And you see, when everything is hunky-dory, everything is fine, everything is okay, people hardly ever look for God or learn about God. You presume that this world is where the action is, and because you're real smart, that's why you're doing well, and all that. And there are some people, God knows them. If Satan, listen, Satan knows if he gives them little problems, they'll run to God quick. So what does he do? He sets them up for 30 years, 40 years. And then faces them with a combination knockout blow. At that time, he knows it will be tough for them to go seeking God. The man said to me, said, Pastor, these things, I wish I'd known them earlier. I said, they were always available. They were always available. Hello? So what am I saying to us right now? People give us the notion that God is boring. Religion gives you the notion that God is, is not a king, he's pursuing you, looking for you all over the whole place. Let me tell you the truth about your father, the one we call father, the almighty, the king, the one who sits on the throne. He delights to see us. Oh, you think he doesn't know about pleasure. He knows about pleasure more than anybody here. The pleasure available with him is forevermore. God likes to pleasure. Oh, do you know somehow if you're not careful and you begin to like look at life the way religion looks at it or the way the ordinary man looks at it, you think God is one man upstairs with a cane just waiting for you to get it wrong? Let me tell you where all this madness started. It actually started in the Garden of Eden. If you go back to the book of Genesis, go study Genesis, you'll find that God will come to be with Adam in the cool of the evening. At that time, man did not know anything like pain, disappointments, despair, despondency. It was from pleasure to pleasure. Oh, you see, when God will come down, Adam will have his hand behind his back, ready that, hmm, who knows what is coming up today. No! God is not like that. So what happened? When man, Adam and Eve, disobeyed, and they were cut off as a consequence of their action, the moment they were cut off from his presence, where there's fullness of joy, the moment they were cut off from his presence, where there's pleasures forevermore, Something happened. Thoughts that Adam had never gotten in his life before began to bombard his mind. Fear came upon him. How do we know? God comes in the cool of the evening into the garden. And what does Adam do? He hides. And, you know, trust God is like playing with a child. They say, ah, where are you? Where are you? Like God couldn't see him where he was. Where are you? And Adam is like, ah, you know... Um, we heard your voice coming and uh, because we were naked I, I, you know I, I hid myself because I was naked 
And God said, who told you that you are naked? Listen, when he could access the presence of God, he couldn't be naked. He was covered by a glory. He couldn't be worried. He didn't have any problems. He didn't have any challenges. His thoughts were well channeled. You see, the average Nigerian, for instance, is extremely suspicious. In Nigeria, here, somebody wants to bless you, wants to give you a gift. And they say, oh, I just bought this for you. <laughs> you're thinking, hey, what's this guy's angle, man? <laughs> I mean, you're taking the gift. You say, yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah, that's cool. And then you're wishing like, so what next, man? So where are you going? <laughs> At least in Uganda, it's a bit, you know, a, a bit uh, better, you know. In Rwanda, the people are a bit less complicated. But I discovered that in Nigeria, especially in Lagos, ha, 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 hello, every, the spirit in the city, every man is on his toes. So what are you up to exactly? Amen. Even in families, father to son, mothers to daughters, husbands to wives, wives to husbands. Some husbands come home, there's food already on the table, everything is warm, everywhere is tidy, everything is looking so cool, some cool music in the background. He puts his jacket down and sniffs the air suspiciously. What's going on here? Uh-huh. Oh, darling, you're back. Okay. Right. Right. Okay. Smooth. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, your food. Food is ready already? <laughs> okay, cool, 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 cool. Then he's Every muscle he's eating, he's waiting. We'll soon get to the bottom of this mystery. Amen. Or you see a husband is coming home and he just drops by in a pastry shop. And he buys some you know, nice pastry for his wife and stuff and stuff like that. And oh, I just got this for you. Say, so what did you do? <laughs> Hello, what did you do? Because he's wondering, for you to, you are trying to pacify me. You are trying to pacify me. Why did you buy this pastry? Something is happening somewhere. And she begins to wait for you to just go so that she can just get your phone and check the last five numbers. Hello? You see, what we don't know is this. Paranoid. That's the result of people who can't access the presence of God. They never think the best. They always think the worst. Have you noticed that most people start a business, they never think, oh, when this succeeds, this is what we're going to do? No. Instead of assurances, questions are flooding. So if this fails, what's the fallback position? So if that happens like that, so what do we do next? And you see, that thinking attracts failure. And it wasn't like that from the beginning. And the only way you can neutralize that is for us to gain access back to the presence of God. And that's what Jesus Christ came to do. You see, the way that man looked at God before the fall was different from the way that man looks at God after the fall. Prior to the fall, you see God, you are shouting, Oh Lord, I'm happy. After the fall, you just call anybody and say to them, I'm going to pray for the sick. Can you just follow me? Let's go pray for the sick. Um, somebody has hepatitis somewhere. I'm going to go lay hands. Uh, can you just come along? You know the first thought of the Christian? He begins to check himself. Do I have sin? Am I able? Am I right? Am I acceptable to God to go for such an errand? Excuse me. Have you noticed that children don't think like that? But when the world and its systems enter children, then that complexity comes into the picture. And do you know how much we've lost? Because God cannot work with people who are paranoid. You see, God himself is an incurable optimist. As long as there's breath in you, as long as there's five minutes to go, as long as there's one minute to go, there's 30 seconds, 29, down to the last second, God is optimistic. He knows that the story will change. You don't understand what I'm saying. And you see, that's why the Bible says, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. When God speaks, He speaks a future to you. You know my thoughts for you, that thoughts of good, not of evil, to bring you to what? Unexpected end. But you see, we need to begin to understand this. That Jesus Christ came to make us get to begin to think properly. It all started with mind games. And I tell you something, go to church and if you don't get to the kingdom, you will still think like a normal person. 
a fallen man. It's only when you access the kingdom of God that you can say, let the weak say I'm strong. If the weak comes to church and does not access the kingdom, and he says, I'm strong, it's, it's being silly. It's the manifest presence of God. There's a position like that. And we're going to be looking at it from the African perspective. I think the African church has something to teach the rest of the church around the world today. Because we had a lot of negative spiritual experience before science came. And we found out that there are principles in the realm of the spirit, just as there are principles in the natural. Ever before Christianity was brought to Africa, we knew that if somebody is sick and another person is strong, if that sick person can afford it, he can call on a man of darkness who will come and cast spells, negotiate, and go for what they call substitution. Pass the sickness to the healthy person. And take the health of the, of the healthy person and give it to the one who was sick. That's how many chiefs survived in ancient times. Oh, you say, but science has come and all that. Listen to me. Let me tell you what science has done. Science is a study of the predictable things in the universe put there by God. There will be no GSM telephony if electromagnetic waves were not predictable. Who made them predictable? The force of gravity was not created by science. They only observed it and studied it and then began to exploit it for machinery. So what did ancient Africa know? Just as you have laws in the natural that if you study the visible spectrum of creation, you can become a technologist or a scientist and do many things, go to space, go to moon. So also we also knew that you can cover distances in the realm of the spirit based on spiritual principles. And we knew in Africa that they don't mix. Even before the scriptures came to tell us that which is born of the flesh is flesh and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Well, Jesus Christ, the vicarious sacrifice, where Jesus substituted himself for us, is easy for the African mind, because such substitutions have been going on before. A man who was born and bred in the place of science has a problem understanding how God can come as man. But an African whose great-grandfather was in the leopard court, we are men negotiate with darkness and turn into leopards at night. If a man can turn into a leopard at night, why does he have problems believing that God can come as a man? You say, but why aren't these things happening anymore? You don't want them to. The legacy of Africa was the greatest legacy of ancient Egypt. When I watch all these films on ancient Egypt, and I see, um, especially the Caucasoid race, white people, trying their best to hijack the history of ancient Egypt, I feel like telling Africans, leave them alone, let them have it, because they don't know what they're playing with. When a white man goes to ancient Egypt and he sees all those pyramids, sees all those half cat, half human, half jackal, half this, and he sees a pantheon of gods, he's looking at it from the perspective of science. But the man who has grown up in the root of Africa understands that what you are looking at, these are not figurines, these are not for decoration, what you are seeing are effigies, that men carved by the instruction of the forces of darkness. And you say, so why is it that these things are not working this well? Number one, science is part of truth. Because science is actually praise and worship. The study of the predictability that who? God put into the universe. So you can use the truth that belongs to God to defeat forces of darkness. Why? If somebody makes a concoction and asks lightning to strike somebody, which in ancient Africa was part of warfare, certain courts specialized in that, and somebody is smart enough to put a lightning conductor over the roof of that hole, no matter the incantation, hello, there's a law in the realm of the spirit that wherever the law of God is, you cannot break it. So the law of God called for lightning, where the lightning conductor is operating on, 
will still supersede and overtake the incantation and the evil intention. In those days, how many people in Africa used to die of lightning strikes? How many people did you, have you seen today who die of lightning strikes? That's number one. Number two, because of the general mercy of God and the atmosphere of enlightenment, the most crucial element that delivers power to darkness has been reduced all over the world. We didn't need the white man to tell us about genetic engineering. We know that the blood of a cow is different from the blood of a man. Our forefathers offered sacrifices and they knew that certain levels of problems needed certain levels of sacrifices. There was no way you bring the blood of a monkey or blood of a goat and make it the equal of the blood of a man. Now even among men, there were certain titles in ancient times before you entered your body hut to sit down. He must tread on the blood of a virgin. Because the efficacy of the blood of a virgin is different from the blood of a non-virgin. Now, why today is it now that a lot of the forces of darkness cannot work? Because they are not being filled. They are filled by worship. And the worship they usually require is blood. Human blood. Ancient Egypt, the blood sacrifices of ancient Egypt were not a result of, oh, the slaves are just too many. No. All those half cat, half woman, half jackal, half man, all those things that you see will make the demand. Africa was the first to learn that when we beat drums, we dance, syncopation, ululations, panegyrics, when we get into that, a spirit response from the other side. And Africa was deceived that initially by those spirits who claimed that they were the mighty God. Priesthoods were formed after them. They taught and gave advantage. It was their instruction that created human slavery. You'll find that if you go to the east among the Igbos, is every tribe. You'll find that there's a family called Diala. The Dialas. You'll find another family name that in ancient history they'll tell you straight away these ones were in rulership. That family they were Osu. They used them for sacrifices. All over Africa. It was the legacy of ancient Egypt. If the UK permits human blood sacrifices to come back and the Thames River you allow people to hello to butcher you will see demonstrations of power that will scare you. Because somebody will have been feeling the forces of darkness. And that's why when this gospel came to Africa, when Jesus Christ came to take us to the place of pleasure, let me give you the spiritual laws right now. You go before the Lord, it's pleasure, joy unspeakable. No matter what took you to his presence, you go before Satan and the forces of darkness. Do you know one ingredient that must be there? A dreadful and morbid fear. <laughs> one DB I was on television some years ago in Lagos. So when you are poor and you can't make money, we will help you and we will do something for you that will give you advantage. Oh, people think it's a joke. So the guy was saying, but the person is coming to you for help. He doesn't have money. What if he can't afford to pay for that juju? The guy laughed. He said, you can owe us. Ah, the compare was happy. The interviewer said, oh, in this Lagos, full of sharp men. He said, what if we come, you do the charm for us, we get the money, and we don't come back to pay you your money. The man began to laugh. <laughs> the man was laughing. The thought of you not coming back to pay. Didn't occur to the Babalawo. You know what his reply was? He said, When you two see the Igrimilale that is going to deliver into your hands at the final stop, 
After all the human sacrifices and whatever, the being that is going to be called into manifestation to hand over to you the final charm with which you sold your soul for advantage. It will not dawn on you. <laughs> Look, people keep asking, say, oh, no. You see, in the presence of God, there's fullness of joy. To come to God, there must be faith. There must be boldness. That's why some people can get to church. Even in church, we still use fear. Dreadful fear, morbid fear. When you do that, it means you stop people from accessing the kingdom. Listen, the power to heal, the power to protect, the power to be established does not come from church. It comes from the kingdom. It is where the word of a king is that there is what? Power. The church was created as a tool in the New Testament days to fund the kingdom. But there's a presumption in the modern day because of the democratic pattern of thoughts that you come to church and it's like a democracy. No, when we come to church, look at where we have come. Every time we gather like this, we have come to He that sits upon the throne. We are headed for a spiritual location. There are 24 elders who will either deny access or permit access. There are spiritual protocols. It is the person who is able to get the spiritual protocols right that goes home with favor, with advantages. Listen to what I'm trying to let you know and one of the reasons why the church in Nigeria is having problems. The Nigerian church is fond of stopping people in church and stops short of permitting them to access the kingdom. It's not new. The Pharisees were like that. They promised everything. A daughter of Abraham was bent over double 18 years. Coming to the synagogue. Come for this program. Look, religion will keep you coming to church, coming to synagogue, coming to mosque, coming everywhere. Continuously promising you but never delivering. Why? Because there's a deception in, in religion that can keep you coming. But the day the kingdom of God entered the synagogue, the woman bent over double. It was that day. She saw her release. Woman, thou art loosed. Why? Where the word of a king is, there is power. If the kingdom did not come to the synagogue that day, she would have kept going for the next 18 years. We gather because the access that was denied in the days of Adam have been restored. So instead of carrying fear to Satan, we carry boldness and confidence for fullness of joy. And for pleasure. Somebody say pleasure. <laughs> I don't like some, some of you are saying pleasure. How can you say pleasure with a straight face? Tell your neighbor, say pleasure. God's presence. Pleasure. Pleasure is addictive. That's why Elijah will let you know. I'm Elijah who goes to God's presence. God's presence is addictive. Pleasure. Is addictive. Anywhere you see where they keep having to tell people, come for a prayer meeting, please do this, please do that. Look, the average person there has never been to the presence of God. The pleasures alone will make you come back. In those days, we didn't have money. We didn't have anything. And we found out that we could find help from the presence of the Lord. The bank would not listen, but God would listen. So we would set us our time and go to the presence of the Lord. By the time we come back into time, everything begins to work. Like I was telling my son today, I said, hey, my friend, let's go and pray. I know you're an adult now, but it was this prayer that sent you to school? Oh, I know you're all sophisticated and all grown up now, but boy, you could have easily been a plumber down the streets. Oh, yeah. Many for lack of opportunity. And who made this opportunity available? These prayers. This God. So remember that. Excuse me. You'll find out. I'm confident. I know what I'm saying. It's just a matter of time. You don't understand what I'm saying? How many families are their children wallowing in mediocrity? Because the fathers refuse to go for the presence of the Lord. A man came to me in church. The wife had come. That she doesn't like the school the children are attending. 
The man said, look, the school you want the children to attend, it costs five times more than the former school. I don't agree. He thought, look, this woman, the, the get out of her pastor. I said, no. He said, what? I said, no. He said, change the children. Send them to that school. You are able. He looked at me. You are siding my wife. I said, no, I'm siding God. <laughs> you are a father. You need to provide. You don't know the meaning of father? Let me get to you why some people go to church and never get to the kingdom. It's because of the modern interpretation. You see, Jesus Christ taught us a prayer. And you need to understand this. The Bible says we have the spirit of adoption whereby we cry what? Abba, Father. Now, when we hear Father in the modern day, the word Father evokes emotional connections. Emotional. You know the real meaning of Father? Abba, Father. Ab. The word means source. If your grandfather had died, there would be no father. If grandfather had died, there would be no you. So actually, in the real essence of the word Ab, 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 Abba, the real essence of the word means source. And an African understands meaning of source. It has nothing to do with the man carrying a brick face coming, coming to the house every day, saying, oh, I'm the one providing food. No. He's both the source of life and the source of sustenance. That's the real meaning. And that's why when they said, teach us to pray, do you know what God said? Jesus taught them. He said, our Father, our source. Our source is not in the government of the nation. Our source is not in the discussions in the United Nations. Our source, that is where? In heaven. Hallowed be your name. And for you to know it has nothing to do with the emotional hogwash that the people are trying to portray all over the whole place. The next line clears all doubts. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. What's the next line? Your kingdom come. What is he saying? Your source is the word of the king. That's what he said. So you come to church, say, you know, God is my father. You know, I just talk to him like a father. Fool. When I was a child, I speak as a child. The, the disciples said to Jesus, teach us to pray. You think prayer is for babblers? Look, in that court, when you get to the presence of a king, I was telling my wife, we have this family, the lovely people, lovely personalities. We love them. They love us so much. But the man is a king in Nigeria here. So every time he tries to let me, get me to come to his house, do you know why I don't go? No matter how much he likes me, no matter how much we, we like to talk, and you know, I'm blessed, he likes my presence, I like his presence, we enjoy. The truth is this, he is a natural king in Nigeria, and whether you like it or not, when you see a king, there are something, there's something they call what? Protocols. There are certain protocols for natural kings in the land. So no matter how much we enjoy, if I'm with him, immediately some people come and people go flat. Whoa! So, are you going to say you're not going to go flat? Natural rulers, natural kings, they do pay what they call obeisance. Go and check the scriptures like in Old Testament days. So sometimes when I think of all the protocols and all that, I have friends that have been made rich by that king. Because they don't care about the protocols. They know that once you can be with him, he always asks, so what do you need? What's going on? X, Y, and Z. But you know, I like the man, I like the way they are, I like the family, but those protocols are too heavy for me. The protocols of man. But the protocols of God is not like that. He says, come and learn of me. My yoke is easy and my burden is what? Light. Why do I teach these things? Look at this country. If not for the mercy of God. I have friends who lived in neighboring countries in Africa. Who told me how they went to work one morning. And mid-afternoon gunshots. They were hearing about wars, rumors of war. And from that day, they could not get back to their house. Some of them became refugees. Some of them had passports. British passports, American passports, German passports. But is it not the passport you can touch that you present at the border? 
So when there are 2,000 refugees shouting, I say, I'm a British. <laughs> Is anybody going to pay attention to you? So you see, let's get these things right. Whether at home, we are coming here, we are, come, we are going to appear before the king. In the presence of this king, he is not interested in... You know, Africans, my friend who, 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 was, who transferred to another country, his boss had to call him and said, Why is that when we talk to you, you never look us in the eyes, you are always looking down. What's your problem? Ah, my friend said, look, in Africa, we are taught that when an elder is talking, you look down. You don't look him in the face. The guy said, no, in this culture... When people talk to you and you are straightforward, you look them in the eyes. So when you are a shifty character, when you are a criminal and a crook, is when you start looking down. You know what he told me? He said for him to look people in the eyes, it took him months of practice. He will have to practically use his hand to hold his head. <laughs> because they thought he was a criminal. In the presence of God, there is fullness of joy. At his right hand there is what? Pleasure. You will get the pleasure. Now, he is not stingy with those pleasures. The problem is that people don't get there. And these are the things that have been blocking people from getting there. Number one, that sentimental hogwash. That your source is, you know, papi. It just means source. Is your source, is your sustenance. And his first description for you is that he's your king. He was always king of kings. So when Jesus finished, said it is finished and came back and said, Now I go to my father and your father. He wasn't asking you to think of somebody buying biscuits. Somebody who's come and say, Oh, mom, (laughs) I asked your mom. I know that. No. He was trying to let you know that the source that powered me while I was here, what is behind my miracles? What is behind my advantage? My invincibility. That source has now become your source. Follow the protocols I follow. You do what you got to do. You touch the same source. Just like I. Oh, somebody say thank you, Jesus. Now, this is the African advantage. We know these things. We have not become so democratic that we, 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 we don't understand... Look at our kings. We know that you don't approach a king without protocols. You don't talk anyhow. There's a language of court. You say, I just pray anyhow. I just pray anyhow. Please. What again is one of the problems? When Adam ate the fruit and was cut off from access, he lost his courage. That's why the Bible always says, Therefore let us come boldly. A people who know the secret of fullness of joy. Look, let me tell you that boldness has great advantages. And it is godly. Let me even give you a little joke. When we were in secondary school, we ran into trouble. Lots of rascals. You know, some of our friends. There was this particular fellow who was more rascally than everybody else. But he knew his father was highly placed. His father was a commissioner or something like that. He would smoke not only cigarettes, he would smoke everything possible. Was our main man. His nickname was We We People, you know. How are we? Amen. Something like that. So the school set up a panel of inquiry. All the people who were naughty, who had done wrong things, all of us students went in there shivering to exonerate ourselves. That no, I'm not part of them, but I don't know what is going on. You know, I like this boy. Wasn't right, wrong spirit, <laughs> but right ingredients. He flew his collar when he was going in and put on dark sheets with his hand in his pocket and he went in to meet the panel. So first of all, the panel looked at him. Everybody comes here trembling. <laughs> What's with this boy? Of course, he knew his father was a commissioner who his father was way ahead of all of them in the civil service. So he put his hand in his hand. So they asked him, Ha, huh? why are you smoking? He asked them, did any of you see me? <laughs> did any of you see me? You just set up a kangaroo court here and then you just think that you can call students and then begin to harass us. You think this is right? Is this what you are supposed to be doing to students? As everybody was just looking for outside the window like this. We, we, awawa. I mean, all students were trembling. I'm talking about vice principal, principal, everybody. And awawa was asking them, they were supposed to be asking him questions. He had the audacity to be asking them, beloved, only one person got scot free. Got off scot free. Do you know who? Awawa. <laughs> now, 
now, if a criminal can take a goju to go to the... Ah! Why do you think... Let me show you the list of people who can never make it with God. Book of Revelations. Let me show you something. You can't say, I know God and be a fearful person. <laughs> Revelation chapter 21. From verse 7 and 8. For those who are listening to us, no matter what part of the world where you're at, it's the same spiritual principles. Africa can tell you this. It's the blood of Jesus that makes the way for us. That was the only price that could get us back into the presence where there's fullness of joy and there's pleasures forevermore. So the place where we can see and receive power, receive help in time of need. Now, the Bible says, He that overcomes shall inherit all things. Verse 7. And I will be his God. And he will be my son. But the fearful. Can you see the person who leads the list? But the fearful. Unbelieving. Abominable. Are all in the same category. As murderers. And whoremongers. Adulterers. And sorcerers. Witches, wizards and the fearful. And those who worship idols. Are all in the same category. And all liars. You know what their destination is? They'll have their part in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. The fearful. One of the first ways God knows that you are not his own, that you belong to Satan, is your fearfulness. That's why you can go to church and not get to the kingdom. Religion uses fear, guilt, to trap people. Hello? This week, there shall be no fear. Amen. No knowledge makes all the difference. Now, I want to tidy up because we're going to say one or two prayers before we go. But what I want you to realize is this. That when the Bible says, come boldly before the throne of grace, you see how Awawa did? Even if you have done something wrong. Did you hear what I said? See, some people think they are pleasing God as believers. Pastor, <sighs> see, what is this? I just pray God has forgiven me. What did you do? Pastor, in 1975. <laughs> you know, they actually feel it is holy. I mean, these are kind of, kind of things I wish I can forget in my life. Pastor, if it was only 1975, would I be okay? In 1977, again. <laughs> And they begin to tell you what they did in 1975, 1977. Look, to make sure that you can appreciate fullness of joy and pleasures forevermore, the first thing that the blood of Jesus comes to do is to take care of the past. Somebody say past. Do you know what the past is? What I said one minute ago. <laughs> ah. Look, for a lot of people, they think I must show God. You know, you have to show God they are really sorry. Listen, God looks into your heart. Is your pastor you are showing? You are showing your evangelist, your prophet. You are showing them that you are serious. You are showing them that you are worthy of fullness of joy. No, God is not like that. A woman caught in adultery in the very act. I like the way the Bible puts it. The very act. That is no go call. Amen. Trust the man. He escaped. They brought the woman. They were going to stone her to death. According to the law. And Jesus intervened. I know the interesting thing. He looked at the woman and said, has any man condemned you? She said, no. She says, neither do I. You know what I'm telling her? Collect the fullness of joy. Get the pleasures forevermore. Now, somebody will say, look at that woman. She was caught in adultery last week. She has even put her head up again. Listen, in Nigerian church, there was a minister who made a mistake some years ago. And he had an adulterous affair. You know why I admire him? Everybody said, some criminals were saying, resign. Someone to take over his property. Criminals, thieves. God looks at the heart. The man went before the Lord, squared himself. When he got everything up, he got up afresh and started again. Now, that's the God we serve. You see, the God of religion and the God of church writes it down in one corner. Let us watch her behavior for six months. That's the woman caught in adultery. Let's watch her behavior for six months before we know whether to restore her to the fellowship. Oh, it all sounds good. But if you are in a place where you look into the hearts of people, your judgment will have been righteous. That's why I prefer the kingdom to church. I use the church to access the kingdom. But I prefer the kingdom of God. And I keep saying to you, religion deliberately 
keeps you away from the kingdom. You know what I feel sorry for the most? The modern believers. There are many Paulians who are not Christians. If you study the Bible very well, the concept of the kingdom of God is in Genesis. It's all over the Bible. And it's all over Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. It's all over the book of Acts. But when you get into the epistles of Paul, you'll find out that he deals with the church more than the kingdom. He deals with the details of church administration. He deals with revelations of what happened after the cross. Your new birth. You see, he talks about the new birth, talks about new creation, gifts of the spirit, and all these things. And it seems as if he's not talking much about the kingdom. But we forget that Apostle Paul himself kept telling everybody, follow me as I follow after Christ. Apostle Paul takes it for granted that you have read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John before you read his letters. And Apostle Paul himself will tell you that, look, no homonger, no this, no that, will inherit the kingdom of God. If you look for his references in the epistles to the kingdom of God, they are without number. But intellectuals enjoy Paul's discourse so much. It explains so many spiritual technicalities that you get hooked up in all those explanations and you lose sight of the kingdom. And some people even think that the epistles of Paul are superior to the accounts in Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. Come to Africa, let's explain to you what a blood sacrifice is. Come, let's explain to you what a court is and how you go before a king. In a democracy, your opinion counts. In a kingdom, it doesn't. In a democracy, you are the one who decides how rich you can become. In a kingdom, if the king doesn't like your riches, he confiscates it. What can you do about it? In a kingdom, you may be poverty stricken. And the king says, you know what? I want you wealthy. That's the end. There is still a king of kings. Listen to this very well. If you come to church and don't get to the kingdom, you do yourself a disservice. This is why Jesus said something. Seek ye first the kingdom. But you know what? Satan doesn't mind you seeking it second. In fact, I was just remembering my son today, JT, my boy. So I decided to wear my shirt out like, you know, <laughs> praise the Lord. You know, the British, it was, I'm going to be British now, I tuck in my shirt and put my belt all over it. But my boy is in LA, you know what I'm saying? And I just remembered JT this morning. Hey, JT, just in case he's watching us, you're doing good. I just put on my... Now, United Kingdom came to Nigeria and made us put tie, not tie. In fact, when I put on my shoes, I refused to put on any socks. <laughs> Amen. Because I wanted to put on the socks and I thought I looked like a masquerade. And I thought some people wear socks in the cold climate in the UK, in Britain, I can understand it. It's going to be hot out there in Africa when I step out of my house, the air conditioning. Why am I putting socks looking like a masquerade? So I refused to wear the socks. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, the king of England or queen of England, they made us wear heavy woolen suits in the tropics. You go to the bus, it's not air conditioned. You see a man going to the office, he's sweating like a pig in his polyester shirt, scrambling on the nylon tie and plastic pants. He's sweating like a pig. But he doesn't feel complete. You know why? The culture of the United Kingdom came to Africa. I don't want the culture of the United Kingdom. I want the culture of the Kingdom of God. I want fullness of joy. I need confidence. Hearts of men may fail them. It doesn't fail me. There's nothing I do that will fail. Because God is behind me. I've seen a lot in my lifetime so far. And I keep telling people, whatever blind eyes we've seen open, whatever paralysis we've seen disappear, whatever lungs replaced, Organs replaced, the things we have seen as a result of prayer have not even come because of any special position or any anointing. It's just that there is a king whose word has power and I have the influence to take you to his presence. Amen. Amen. Anybody too. Jesus, Bible says, Revelations 1 6, he has made us to be what? Kings and priests. That's why if you don't come boldly, your prayer cannot be answered. You thought you would impress God with crying? 
<laughs> now those are for people who are not a part of the kingdom. <laughs> they should cry more. But when the blood of Jesus has redeemed you, your life has been recovered. You are replenished. You are not meant to come like that. You are meant to come as a son, a king, coming to the king of kings. You are meant to come like a war. Whose father was commissioner, commissioner of education. And he knew that these wicked principles that rusticated him in a few schools already. So he had the experience. So he knew this is not the time. Awawa. <laughs> this is not the time to play games. <clears throat> he came in with boldness. Why? My father is the commissioner of education. All of you are great four principals. Talk to me anyhow. Let's see. Uh huh. Kangaroo court. So some of you, please. It starts when? In those days, they hated SU movement. Parents hated it. In the 70s. Once they go to fellowship, rich parents said, imagine, children of poor people will now come and be marrying her daughters. Silly folks did not realize that the least in the kingdom of God is better than the best in their kingdom of darkness. Of course, when people got saved then, they were redeemed, they got the blood of the Lamb, come before the Lord, you become a king and a priest. So her father has stolen more money than your father has stolen, doesn't mean anything. Amen? They get married, and they have successful marriages. Because in the kingdom of God, we are all kings. Everybody, no oppression, whatever. It's the kingdom of man that has a problem. So if you know how to bring the kingdom of God, Idahosa's family, I was with his wife. I met her in the airport with the daughter. I know as well, I was greeting my man, lovely woman, Archbishop. And the daughter, as they were all speaking, you know one day I was now thinking to myself, thank God for the late Benson Idahosa, who was born into such a poverty stricken family, that if he had listened to the world and its systems, and he did not go to the place where there is fullness of joy, where there is pleasures forevermore. Till today, they will be looking down on his family in Benin. Till today. But he realized that if I have a kingdom where I am a king and a priest, he wore his first pair of shoes at age 17 or thereabouts. He said he had an uncle he was staying with who promised to give him a singlet for a Christmas present. And he walked throughout the whole year for that singlet. And when Christmas came, the man didn't give him the singlet. Because for him, to have owned the singlet would have been great prosperity. But today, his children's children are walking the nations of the world. It was one of the men that the American president was always inviting then to breakfast. Or whatever that Thanksgiving prayer thing is. Bessie Dowser. In fact, Benson, sometimes his preaching, I used to enjoy him. He would call words like Atoni, Atoni, Antoni. Are you an Antoni? <laughs> but you know what? He couldn't let anybody put him down. He discovered he was a king. He had the boldness and the authority and the audacity to do what is right. He will serve well, he will be honest, he will do everything, but he knew he had backup. You know, that's one of the few examples of people who knew how to go beyond church. And get to the kingdom of God. Now, because he was able to do that, look at the ripple effect on his family and their children. So when he says, in his presence there is fullness of joy, at his hand there is what? Pleasures for how long? Forevermore. It only takes one person in the line to discover the secrets of the Most High. And then pass it down. So no matter what happens anywhere, let me tell you something, we have a backup that is bigger than the United States Navy. No matter what the problem is that's coming from any place, we have somebody who's got our back. Who is stronger than the strongest. And remember something, when you need his help, don't go cowering like a goat. Lord, Father God, Lord, Lord, God, Father, oh Lord, sincerely, oh Lord, Father, at this hour of prayer, 
You know, by that time you have said, can you get out of here? <laughs> you come with what? Boldness. That you may obtain mercy. Find grace for help. In your time of need. So some who went cowering, wonder, you never got into the kingdom. You were not in the spirit. That's why you couldn't get any answer prayer. He doesn't answer. Such prayers are not allowed to get into his presence. Tell me, look at your number, tell your number, say, I'm bold in the Lord. Say, I'm, I'm bold in the Lord. Say, come what may. Say, Jesus has got my back. If you believe that, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Now, let's start to have it. You can also visit us online at www.lwuc.org or be our friend on Facebook, facebook.com slash livingwatersunlimited or follow us on Twitter at LWUC or at Oracles or you can watch us on YouTube, youtube.com slash youtube.com slash youtube.com slash youtube.com slash